Good afternoon, and as always a very warm welcome to Liverpool, to our redemptress home at Bishop Eaton. A message for you this week, beginning with the fact that I've just come round from the primary school at Bishop Eaton, where they were informed on Tuesday that they had an Ofsted yesterday and today, Thursday. So I just popped round to wish them well and hope that things are going okay. They're still standing and uh, looking in good form and optimistic. These things are always a, a very pressurised experience as any of you who has anything to do with schools will know, but I'm sure that uh, everything will be greatly blessed. Please God. Um, it's been an encouraging week. Yesterday I had another uh, visit to the stroke unit, this time at Broad Green, and I'm happy to report that they've signed me off, um, just reminding me to, to keep a quiet eye on the blood pressure. So I'll try and make sure that uh, not too many things force it up uh, and we'll keep uh, as steady and as focused as we can. And again, so thank you for all the prayers and good wishes in these last few weeks. But uh, as you can see, I am feeling uh, much better and uh, things are ticking over. And if all goes to plan, I'll be able to get away next Wednesday. Um, Father Andrew O'Connor, the American priest I mentioned, who offered to come and uh, help out, well, he's arrived, and uh, we've been sort of inducting him into the life of the two parishes. Um, but uh, for the couple of days at the moment now, he's just popped over to see some friends of his in Sheffield uh, who wanted to um, entertain him and uh, be hospitable. He knows them very well. Um, and that, that's uh, really good because I said, well, look, um, uh, I'll be off in the middle of next week, so it's over to you then. And he's, uh, he's a very gracious man and a remarkable memory, a remarkable, remarkable memory for names to begin with. Um, he was also very keen to cycle around the place, so uh, we went down to this cycle shop in Woolton and uh, he got a bicycle and uh, he's mobile now and uh, buzzing all over the place, in exploring the city and getting between the two parishes. Um, so it's, it's a great blessing and I'm very grateful to Andrew for uh, his offer. Uh, because next week, uh, Father Andrew, our Father Andrew Burns uh, and Michael Hennessy and uh, Jim Casey will also be away. They're going up to Scotland for the province retreat. So uh, there'll be quite an exodus from the house, um, but I'm sure that Andrew will cope. And of course, we've a lot of help, uh, as you know, with different care and the wonderful team who come in and uh, look after us. So we're very grateful for all that. Over the piece, um, we've had these evenings uh, looking at the uh, volunteer groups in the two parishes. Um, they were very pleasant evenings. I have to admit, uh, there wasn't a great rush of new people appearing on the scene, but those who are already committed, a lot of you managed to get along. You had some very useful conversations among yourselves. And I think what we're going to do is, rather than form sort of structured parish councils where we uh, almost elect people on and, and so on, we're going to talk about having a, a parish team in, in each parish. Um, and we'll try in the autumn just to invite representatives from all the different groups just to come together. Uh, and we'll have a look at what the needs are uh, and where we need to put, put the effort in. I do think probably people tend to agree to do things if they're approached personally. And uh, many of you know one another, and this could probably be a much better way of getting it to work. So, you know, if the SVP are saying, well, we need a few uh, more people, rather than putting a message out, uh, a sort of general message about the needs uh, to the whole parish, for people just to say uh, to people that they know who might be interested, obviously people are welcome to say no, um, but we'd be delighted if they were able to uh, and cooperate. So I'm just using that as an example. Um, so we're going to, to, to see how that works, that we'll look at the needs uh, and perhaps get the group together, the parish team together, at key times, um, preparation for the great feasts of Easter and Christmas and uh, perhaps one or two other times during the year. Um, alongside that, obviously, if there are needs that, that occur, again, we'll, we'll try this method, I think, of personal approach uh, rather than uh, just general invitations. And in the midst of all that, of course, we've, we've had the excitement of all the sport that's going on and uh, somehow uh, it seems almost by the grace of God, dare I say, that England have managed to get to the final of this uh, uh, European football competition. So we'll just see what happens on Sunday evening. Um, I just met one of the uh, Spanish mothers on the way down to collect 
children from the school just now, and uh, I said, well, there we are. It's Spain and England uh, at the weekend, and uh, she, she was very amusing. She said, well, whichever way, we can't lose, can we? So I thought that was rather a lovely way of looking at it. Anyway, uh, on the bigger front, whatever happens, we can't lose. The Lord is with us. We thank God for the faith that binds us together. We thank God for the saints today, the feast of St. Benedict, that remarkable uh, man who really we see as the father of Western monasticism. And um, we thank God for the wonderful contribution of the Benedictines over the years. It so happens that um, over the years I've landed as parish priest of two former Benedictine parishes, Erdington Abbey in Birmingham, uh, and now of course St. Mary's Walton. And both of them had large cemeteries. So. Uh, uh, that's one thing I don't thank the Benedictines for leaving behind, but anyway, we, we cope. Um, so thanks, thanks be to God for St. Benedict, for all the great saints of the Church. We beg his intercession today, and we beg his intercession particularly for Europe, because he is now one of the patrons of Europe. Um, and please God, peace will soon reign uh, in our continent uh, and uh, across the world, a much more peaceful world, please God. Once again, let's pray to our, May, our Blessed Lady, our Mother of Perpetual Succour. Um, one of the things that's emerging at the moment is that uh, one way of perhaps trying to bind together the families of parishes would be to look at uh, ways of having pilgrimages. And, uh, well, John Elcock, who has led the team for our novena and for developing the shrine ministry here at Bishop Eaton, has come up with a wonderful idea that we will see if we can perhaps... Um, be the first of the families of parishes in, in the diocese to organise a pilgrimage here at Bishop Eaton focused on this wonderful gift of Our Lady Perpetual Succour. So we're going to field that um, possibility and I think an article is going to be written for the PIC uh, along those lines in due course, so watch out for that. So let's ask God's blessing on all the things that are going on as we come up to the end of this school year. Uh, we pray God's blessing on our schools, once again, particularly Bishop Eden at this challenging time of the Ofsted uh, inspection. We pray God's blessing on all those who have asked our prayers, those in need of our prayers. Um, let's pray that the Lord will watch over us, send us those great gifts of the Spirit to strengthen us in all that he wants us to do. And once again, let's beg the prayers of our Blessed Lady. Perhaps we could... Pray the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. God bless.